Curtis Mossop is a gamekeeper turned educator. I think the pigeon yeah. shooting. You get everything. You get you get a kind of driven grouse target. You get a kind of partridge. You get a pheasant. You get a duck. You get a bit of everything. So it tests, um, and, and you'll see how much it tests me today as well. <laughs> <laughs> you will see. He used to preach to the converted as a senior lecturer at Gamekeeping College Newton Rig. Now he's trying to do the converting as Basque's head of pathways to shooting. Basically, he's gone from low-hanging fruit to fruit that's a bit higher and requires an encouraging shake. What, what are sort of the key messages that uh, you would advise people to get across? Yeah, no, and, and it's something we all come across. Um, I think that the main thing is, is, is use language they would understand. Uh, I think we're all very guilty of using quite kind of either regional dialect or kind of like things like Polt and Hopper and things like that. that that we all know and love, but people don't understand those terms. So use a language that they know and they understand um, and back it up with fact. Tell them, look, when I did this or when I did that, give them some physical examples of when things have happened. And ultimately, just invite them out. If you're going on a pigeon day like I am now, bring some with you, let them see it. Yes, pigeons are cold, but we're protecting farmers' crops and we actually get a really tasty bit of food at the end of it. They've got to see the whole journey and people will soon realise what we're doing isn't the kind of uh, the big bad shooters that we're, that we're portrayed to be. We are on a rape stubble near Warrington and he has brought gin. She is part of the same line of labs bred by the Mossop family for generations. You must have trained a lot of dogs. Give me one dog training tip. Uh, it, it's not so much a tip, but it, it, it's just spending as much time as you physically can. So I've got a lot of dogs and I've had a lot of dogs. It's just spend time with them and spend even more time. As I can't stress that enough, is just have them with you. And that's easy for me to say, but I have had the jobs in order I could do that. Uh, but have them with you when you're doing your kind of chores, your day chores, when you're doing your kennel, when you're out in your car. They've, they've got to see you. Gene, come here. They've got to see you as their kind of, their world. Uh, and that's what I do. I, I prefer bitches myself, personally. I feel I have that bond with them that they want to be with me. It's not, I don't want, personally, I don't want to battle with a headstrong dog. I want these dogs just to want me and nothing else. Uh, so I like really affectionate dogs. Go on, get, go on, get on, fetch it here. I love really affectionate dogs. Uh, and all they want to do is, is an eager to please. And they don't really want to upset dad. Um, <laughs> and, and that's what it is. And, 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 and again, all you've got to do is got uh, a little raising voice. And the girls, my girls, know that, oh, dad's getting a bit upset. And, and I don't have to battle with them. I don't have to fight with them. And I have to, gin, 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 come here. Yeah, so it's just spend as much time as you physically can. If you've got an older dog that the young dogs could learn off, again, that's always a massive benefit. So I've always had the mums of my pups, again, I've been quite fortunate in that respect. So this one has watched her mum and who's watched her mum. And they pick up so much quicker than a dog without watching this adult. Uh, I've seen it. I actually did a little bit of experiment. So I kept this one and I kept her sister, Willow. Litter sisters out of her, of your litter, off her mum, uh, Fen. Um, and they were chalk and cheese. So the black one that isn't here today was the one that was always getting in trouble, always tipping the dog food ball, of always escaping, just a bit of a nightmare to be honest. And this one here, this one was the, was the, the runt of the litter, the one that was at the back, that wasn't really kind of feeding. I thought, right, I'll just keep that one because everyone says, oh, get the first one that comes to you, get the jumps to their box, that's the best. Never ever get the one at the back. So, okay, so I kept on for an experiment. And as it happens, they've done a complete role reversal. So the black one now is, is incredibly timid in one sense, in, very, very obedient. But if you raise your voice, it kind of, oh. Whereas this one is just a, a bit of a powerhouse. It's a Labrador with a Spaniel's head. And that <laughs> came from the runt of the litter, I had to hand feed. So yeah, don't always believe the old, uh, the old adages. Uh, do it yourself, give it a go. Curtis is passionate about his job and his way of life. This year should have seen him having lots of face-to-face -face conversations with non-shooters all over the country. Instead, he's had to go virtual, but it won't be long before Mr. Mossop is back out there shaking those branches and educating those masses. For more information, go to basque.org.uk. Come on, Jin. Good girl.